Looking onto our Active Directory account object, we see some other columns starting with such a UID underscore as well. Here they are. This is a typical hint that these columns are foreign keys. That means these columns are pointing to other objects out of other tables. Let me show that. For example, if I open the UID ADS container and the metadata section, you can see this is a foreign key. Here we are. And this foreign key says, this Active Directory account object do have the following Active Directory container, which is described in the ADS container table. The naming convention for these objects says, the term that comes after the prefix UID underscore represents the table name of a specific other table. The only thing gets worse if, for example, we reference more than once another table. Let me have an example. There is a person record and this person record. There is the person table again referenced, for example, by pointing to a manager of the person. To do so, we cannot use two UID person columns, one as primary key and the second one as foreign key to the manager. So we will, for example, name this manager column UID person hat, which means this is the boss of the person. At the end, the term after UID underscore, which is not the table name, points always to a foreign key. And the interesting thing here is the name should always point you to the right table. For example, if I look to UID underscore terminal home server, everybody knows it is the terminal home server and we will look into a server table to figure out where the record is. So if I, for example, then type in here server, then you can see could be an exchange server, could be a QBM server. One of these will be the right table to look into. To show you that and to use these relations in Visual Studio, I go back to my Visual Studio and in the Visual Studio, you can see a DB person object, which is a new I entity. And then the easy way to follow a foreign key relation is to create a foreign key relation object. Here it is, I entity foreign key. And I do that on the basis of my DB account object with get FK, which means get foreign key on the session for the column UID person. This returns not a database object. This returns just a foreign key relation. Here it is. And now I can use in a second step the foreign key relation to load the object. Typically, I will do that with a specific if construction. You can see that here. So if the relation is not empty, then please assign to the person object the following related object, which is then my person object. This is the first question. And automatically there is a second question. If I step back an object browser, you can see all of these account objects are just assigned to one person object. We name that a one to n relation, which includes that if I look onto the person object, I should be able to see a number of assigned account objects to this person. One to n relation, one person do have many accounts. The interesting question is what kind of reference this is. And we name that a child relation. That means the person objects do have many child. To get that evaluated, I can step back into my code and I have to do the following. Here is my person object. I just load it with the help of session source get, you know that. I create a query and this query includes look into the Active Directory account table, take the where clause and select all objects where the UID of the person object is the UID we defined on top. Select the displays means that for this collection, I get only the display values back. With the help of this query, I can then load the collection. Here we are, entity, collection load type bulk says all objects are fully loaded. I can handle them whatever I like. And then I have only to step through a loop to handle all of these different account objects. So two things seen. The first thing was following a foreign key to get an object which is related to the table I'm looking at. And secondly, to follow a child relation.